I've got these outlaws chasing me And these lawmen won't leave me be It's hard to make amends With myself and my dead friends Now the tide has turned I gotta find that long road home I'm not sure where that way is Or if there might be One for me to find One for me to find I traveled far and near to find what I hold dear And I just now realize open roads and those blue skies Her name was Annie Lee, everything I wanted her to be Someone to ease my mind, put me to bed during it was time Promises would fade I'd have met her by the light of the moon Now I know who I've got to find One for me to find I got caught in Detroit City And my baby now she feels pity But there's not much you can do When you've gone down a minute or two Red light. Red light usually means. Okay. No one dropped the camera. God, please, what are we doing? A N D Y. R A N E Y. I just quit my job and I plan to drive a golf cart across America with my friend Jeremy Make. Hello. Andy. Jeremy. We're going to the airport. And that's today. That's today. I've been kind of rethinking this whole thing. No, don't. <laughs> Is it too late to back out here? Yes, I'm all packed, sort of. <laughs> Andy and I have known each other since middle school, but we never hung out because I was a huge dork. The first time I see you, <laughs> and we're driving across the country in a golf cart. Yeah, like Let's start with how you came up with this idea, right? This was like a really bad Jaeger night. <laughs> it all started when I was traveling abroad and I was experiencing all these different cultures and it hit me that I don't know what American culture is. What does that mean though? You've grown up here, right? Right, well, in Denver, you know, yeah. like I could tell you roughly what Denver's about. So here's my goal is I, I want to go actually live America. And I want to take the back roads to do it. And that's why a golf cart is such a perfect way to travel. Is it, it's fast enough to get you there, but slow enough to like let you breathe it in. Do you have any goals out of this trip? I mean, there's gotta be a reason you're going. The honest to God truth is I want to be able to tell my kids that I'm a lot cooler than they think I am. I have uh, flip flops duct tape. I mean, should I get a jacket? <laughs> you can't just go discover America. It's too broad. There's no direction there. What's the purpose for going on this trip? Let's find what's at the heart of America. Jeremy and I were just talking about how you really get to the bottom of somebody. <laughs> he came, came to me and he, he spelled it out just underlined art. Yeah. So like a little K, big A-R-T, it's, it's right there. You say, how do you get to know America? I say through not just its artists, but through everyone's art. Don't just tell me what your job is. Tell me what your passion is. And asking what's your art, I think will allow us to get to know people on a much deeper level. First off, I googled cross-country trip on a golf cart. Right. And this article of this guy showed up, George Bombardier. Mm -hmm. And he has driven a golf cart across America before. 
George, I have an important question for you. It's Jeremy. I'm here. I'm, we're both here together. <laughs> Listen, we, um, from the photos that you took of the golf cart, it looks pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's all red. Have you ever bought a one-way ticket before? Never in my life. I mean... What if there's, like, not room for our stuff? We didn't really figure that one out much. No. Where is George from? Rialto. Rialto. Let's go to Rialto. Let's do this. It's gonna be awesome. Artists of America, we're coming for you. I'm gonna need to get somebody to water my plants. Whose idea was this? Yours. This was not my idea. Well, we're off to Rialto, California. We've quit our jobs and we're gonna buy a golf cart that we've only seen in photos from a man we've only talked to on the phone. <laughs> Meet George Bombardier. Ingenuity. It's right here. George is like an eight-year-old trapped in a 90-year-old's body. It was funny because he's actually only 62. Are you filming, too? I'm filming oh, you, George. Oh, great. So the thing about our golf cart is it looks so good from about 30 yards out. This is the golf cart. And then as we walk up the driveway, you can see that it's held together by more and more duct tape. George, it's tiny. I thought it was gonna be a little bigger. Well, what the hell can you do? I went to a car wash, it shrunk. <laughs> I had a guy believe that. <laughs> dumb, dumb asshole. So George, tell us about the golf cart. It's a 1957 Chevy Belair golf cart. You know, I built it myself. This is the electric fuel pump. They try to step on it, I'll just go chick 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 I just disconnect that, shove that in there, use the same clamp. I am not a mechanic. I have no idea what I'm looking at. There are wires everywhere. Some look like phone cords. There's duct tape. There's pieces of cardboard with arrows on them. Positive pole. I got the friggin' arrows going right straight down. George, tell me something. Why on earth did you drive a golf cart three times, nonetheless, across the United States of America? I just wanted to go see the kids. Bombardier's 1993 club car golf cart has been modified to meet road specifications with a few extra touches, such as a miniature refrigerator attached to the front. Oh, God damn, that's right. And a grill made from a shopping cart. I forgot all about that goddamn thing. It's something I built from nothing. And it is indestructible. I don't know. <laughs> George's favorite time of year is election season. Because as soon as the elections end, he gathers all the cardboard signs of every politician and brings them back to his house and builds things out of them. Like this thing. What, what kind of signs are on our golf cart then? Well, the cardboard will be where the headlights are. You got a yeah. man. You got a man. Was, was that an Ed Scott sign? I don't know what sign it was. <laughs> take the cover off, take a look, see on the inside. See what the inside says. So George's been talking about these homemade movies that he's made. So he sits us down in front of his big screen to watch some of them. This is the Millennium Run. I don't know, here we go. Here we go. You can see in his eye the pride that the man has. And with good reason. I mean, he's done something that no one has done before. George is like the kid who spends his entire Sunday making a rocket ship out of cardboard. The golf cart is his spaceship.
George, what's your art? I just do what I want to do at that time. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it when I was a kid. That's how I did it now. Why couldn't you do it as a kid? I don't know. I wasn't highly educated. I always had to work. I got married. I had a bunch of kids. You got to support the family. That's what you did in those days. Today is different. In those days, you, you got married and you did what you had to do. That was it. Today, I don't know what the hell the kids do today. I do what I want. It's, they have their problems, I have mine. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, nobody wants to see me die, but I'm gonna die. And I accept that. I'm just gonna get the most out of life that I got left. And if I don't watch myself, I won't be long. Can't really sleep, which is weird. Four, four a.m. We're about to leave. I don't know what we're doing. Rainy, you nervous? God, I hate you. Really pumped. Look how pumped you are. Dude, fist pump. Here we go. There are a lot of things I don't know. Are we going to break down in rural Arizona, hundreds of miles from the nearest gas station? Will our cell phones work? I'm going to miss you guys. Hey, I'm going to miss you, George. What happens when it rains? gonna get sideswiped by a semi? George, what do you gotta say to us before we leave? Be careful. It's not a joke what you guys are doing. No. You're gonna enjoy it, and you're gonna get scared. I am so nervous. But for whatever it's worth, that energy is powerful. <laughs> this is the first day of the best journey of my life. Bunch of assholes. So, uh, having some troubles with the cart. What, um, what kind of troubles, Andy? Well, it, like, everything's good with it, except it just doesn't turn on. So, I'm trying to, uh, jump it right now. You shouldn't have any problems with that particular engine. It's a brand new engine. That'll take you right through like nothing. There is no key in this golf cart. You can turn it on and off. Like this. They won't give you a ticket in this, bro? Uh, we'll find out. All right, man, you guys take care, okay? All right. You guys take it slow and suck it easy, and somebody will spread you later. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. Let us burn one from end to end. After a pretty tough start, we finally head east. Andy's art might be singing. Mine is definitely not. Light me up before I go. If you don't like my fire, then don't come around. Yes, I'm gonna burn one down. Yes, I'm gonna burn one down. So I've been thinking about some some other names for our trip. Okay. Rather than, than cart across America, I think it should be two guys really close to each other for a long time across America. I, I don't think this is that close. Me neither. If you don't like my fire, then... That's the part everyone knows. The, don't come around. Yes, I'm gonna burn one down. Oh, yes, I'm gonna burn one. No, no, no. Hi. 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 
So a lot of people have been posting questions on cardacrossamerica.com. Hey guys, just checking in. Uh, hope you're doing good. Hope you're not, you know, dead out in the desert somewhere. Hey, I just wanted to be the first one um, on your website to ask the question I know everyone's thinking, which is, how fast does your cart go? Christine goes about 40 miles an hour downhill. Our golf cart goes about 30, 35, I would say. I want to know if you have someone who follows you when you drive your cart. We chose not to have a follow car just to make this real. This is just me, the golf cart, and a six foot three inch man sitting next to me. Gross. Andrew, drive safely. Don't do anything stupid like you normally do. And you need to send me some pictures that you promised me because I'm your mom and you told me you'd do it and you know what promises are all about. Hey mom, here's some photos of the golf cart. Please send cookies. Front trunk. Back trunk. Glove compartment. Seat belt. Fake wood dash. Floor vent. Stereo. Light switch. Light switch number two. Cruise control. It's great to actually be up and running. And now we finally get our opportunity to test out the question that this trip is all about on my friend Jackie. What's your art, Jackie? Uh, I was thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I think my art, because I'm not a very artistic person in any way, shape, or form, is trying to be a good person. I don't think I'm necessarily that good at it, but I think I'm conscious of it and I try it. I've known Jackie almost as long as I've known Andy, but I had no idea that that's what she considered her art. I'm really starting to realize the power of this one simple question. What's your art? My art is storytelling. My art. That's a tough one. I have so many different forms of art that I do. Photography. Documentary. I don't think I understand the question. I've seen on TV these people ask these questions and they're supposed to say like, well, art is a way you can express your feelings. Believe in life. I like to take materials and bust them up and make stuff out of them. Found objects. Art? Mm -hmm. I build hot rods. Do you really? Yeah. I have lots of arts. Gosh, you're asking me this highly intellectual thing. What would you say that your art is? I make babies. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> my art is a culmination of my feelings and the way I feel about God and the universe and people. Art to me is a way to avoid having a real job. Although we are doing art, we're engaging people, we are still professional athletes yeah. by trade. There can be both. My art is food. I can't see myself doing anything else. My art is making a person look real good. My art is the theater. That spoken word really was the key to getting me out of prison. My art would be this museum. What's your art? My art? What can you mean my art? My art is empowering people to express their rhythmical spirit. I create it for probably just the pleasure of creating. It's just, it's like an obsession. It's like a drug. I mean, the most honest expression of my art is, is the life that I'm creating. Believe in life. Believe in life. Now I want you to close your eyes and picture a blacksmith. No, really. I'll give you time. Now open them. Shannon Von Wright, blacksmith extraordinaire. My art is delicate and feminine, and it's steel. You know, you get it super hot. You know, you get it hot and you have seven seconds to work with it before it's hard again. <laughs> if I'm creating a sculpture, I generally will see it in my head. It like pops into my head and I see it completed. It's like a five and a half foot vagina. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Vaginas across America. 
mm -hmm. or things that look like vaginas. We're gonna make a spear or something or see where we go to from there. A sword. A sword, every guy wants to make a sword for God's sake, yeah. Sculptures are great, they're in the round and every, every way you look at it, it changes and it makes you see something different and feel something different. You know, all artists want to do is share what they have with the world. We just want to share what we have with the world and not be hungry. And it's, it's hard. I believe that you can do anything you want to do. You can be anything that you want to be. It, you just have to work hard. You have to work really hard. Some things will show up at your door and you have to work hard for it. Society puts a lot on you, like you have potential or you need to be doing this and the pressure of the world. It's like, hey, wait a minute, I'm having a really good time over here, you know? What does potential mean that I'm supposed to be something? I'm doing it, I am something. If you're creating, if you're doing, something that you want to do or or learning to play the guitar or practicing and in, in writing and creating and you're doing it. Andy, are you nervous that we're driving at about 30 miles an hour on a, a vehicle that has no doors with a four thousand dollar camera in my hands? <laughs> we have insurance, right? If we don't, now we're definitely going to need it. Why is it that every mechanic laughs at everything? I think you're probably going to die. On a scale of one to ten, how's your body? I feel pretty confident. I don't know if it's ignorance or what. Yeah, no, I know what it is. It's ignorance. You'd think he had better materials than duct tape and tube socks. Oh, what is that? Something's wrong with our oil. What a disaster. Rainy, what just happened? We're driving along and, uh, and our hood just, just flies off. And we start, uh, well, we run it over. Usually, the trend has been when you're driving, we don't break down. When I'm driving, we do. What happened, Jeremy? You put the fuel pump in wrong. Fucking God, man. I think it's only natural to have some doubts about giving up a predictable world and venturing out into the unknown. But you know, that's the good thing about always being able to call friends and family. Hi, Annie. Hey. How are you? Great. What you been doing, driving? So hi, Kendall. Hi, Andy. How are you? Good. Seth, how are you? I'm doing great. Can you hear me okay here? You're coming in loud and clear, brother. Do you think this uh, question that I'm asking people is dumb? What I'm afraid of is that I don't want to be just a dude driving across America on a golf cart. I mean, what am I doing? Is it is this crazy? Figure out America, huh? <laughs> right? Like, does it, I don't even know if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. That's not the point. Yeah. So I guess uh, it's important. Yeah, I don't know if it makes sense. I think it does. I think all good art should inspire. You know, I've always said that uh, if I could do anything besides what I'm doing, uh, it would be something creative. Hell, man, you've inspired me. What do you think my art is? You'll do such a wonderful job at relating to people and understanding what they're trying to express that, that that's part of your art. You're like that guy. I've heard of this guy who, like, he, he gets paid to go to weddings and get everybody to dance. And that's like you, only in life. That's a real job? Yeah, <laughs> it's a real job. You could do that. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you're looking for, but you know, hopefully you find something. I think the people that you'll find will, will make an interesting story regardless of 
whether you find a higher point or not. And it has a lot to do with the obvious benefits of exploring your art. Well, man, it's been a pleasure. You think I, they'll take me back at work when I get home? Not a chance. At this point, Jeremy and I are just happy to have our largest state behind us. And that is a reason to celebrate. Honey, I don't know, but would you please? You got the bend little, I need the keys. Can't jump over and I won't scratch fees. Honey, I don't know. Yeah! I've been out late, we do agree. Some do the door now, what I see. You got the damper down and I'm on my knees. Honey, I don't know. What is your art? I can't tell you. No, now the video's dirty. <laughs> New Orleans, baby, Bourbon Street. This is a Tuesday. I'm moving. I'm moving here. Hey, that's a good shot. That's a good shot. Yeah, so we may have gone a little overboard. Oh, yeah! <laughs> As luck would have it, though, we ran into a missionary group who were more than willing to cleanse us of our sins. Jesus, I thank you for Jeremy. God, and I thank you for the joy that you put in his heart, man. He's just a warm person to be around God. You have redeemed his soul. If he chooses to live for you, may you bless him and just fill him with your joy and your presence and may he know that you're near. You know, I just couldn't break it to these kids that Jeremy's Jewish. If you come to New Orleans solely for Bourbon Street, you're gonna miss what makes this unique city so vibrant and in touch with its cultural roots. Deacon John. Italians came over, they brought their music. The French came over, they brought their music. The Spanish came over, they had their particular kind of music. You know, they all came over and they brought their cultures with them. And so they all got mixed in New Orleans and out comes this special kind of music they call jazz. New Orleans music is a particular style that's native to the city. This is the birthplace of jazz and we try to keep it as authentic as possible. Every imaginable form of jazz began with this. I mean, prior to it, what you heard in New Orleans, there was no jazz. And so that's what's indicative about it. It's the only art form that's truly American. It's all this stuff around Mardi Gras. It's all based around that music. What would Mardi Gras be without music? Can't the jazz best be just food? When you walk the streets of New Orleans, there's this attitude that everybody exudes. And in every storefront, you see that attitude on display. What's the sign read? Be nice or leave. Who's it signed by? Dr. Bob. So we roll up to Dr. Bob's palace. Of course, we're greeted by a sign that says, be nice or leave. Kind of shy like that. That's what Dr. Bob assigned my stuff, Dr. Bob, when I first started doing art. So nobody liked it, they wouldn't know it was me. <laughs> You'll notice a lot of my black, my black images here are African inspired uh, because I was exposed to a lot of African art. White people just can't believe my artwork and it's because they'll never venture into a black neighborhood to see it firsthand. People just, they're cloistered, man, they don't get out. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't see the world too much. So I'm in a, in a way like a conduit for middle class and upper middle class white folks to experience black art. Does anybody know what New Orleans is about? I mean, could you actually put your finger on it? I don't feel like this is a coincidence. She set this up um, for a purpose and a reason. Is this girl's going wild? Because I'll do it! 
I think the art in this city is truly what defines it. Or maybe the city defines the art. Dr. Bob, we just got a few seconds left. What do you want to say to artists in America? Don't give up. Be real, man. Be real. Don't copy people's shit. Be inspired by it. And never be afraid to open that door. Although you gotta figure out who's on the other side. One of a downtown man you need it. Hi， 我个名叫做黄家豪，我嚟自香港。嗯，如果落雨点算啊 ？We found a hotel room for twenty two ninety five, and an RV campground wanted to charge us twenty one dollars. So we said we're going to check to see if the church will let us camp there, and if not, we're going to rough it at Walmart. Roughing it, roughing it. I love you, Walmart. <laughs> Walmart's the coolest. Oh, it's a super center too. It's a no. su- Shit! Oh my God, my God. This is what America's all about. Always low prices. Always camping allowed. I was sort of interested in saying if it's about drawing and being enthusiastic about drawing and loving the the act of drawing, then what? Let's make work that's just about the act. We'll start by doing focusing on one hand, not the other, but still making marks with both. Okay. So take two markers and sniff them. Sniff them. Wow, these are quite. <laughs> yes, I did. I wanted to see how strong they were. These are quite strong. I want us to just make.、Um, we could just make circles. Just make circles, and they don't have to be very big. They can be kind of small, and maybe higher up on the page, like kind of where I am, would be good. Okay, so we're just we're just looking at our right side. All my art forms really connect around the idea of wanting to mark and being excited that that mark identifies me, my presence there. Okay, so what do you notice about the the, the two different circles, two sets of circles?、Uh, my right hand is is way. Better, heavier, better. But if if we def- if we start to define better in different terms, right?、Mm. If we start to look, at, if we start to say, well, maybe better for drawing is bigger, more interesting,、um, a shape that is more dynamic. Could we really say that these are better than those? It's probably more interesting. In my left hand. Maybe.、Yeah. Okay. Cool. Like, what's the goal? Would you say? The goal is to be. Surprised and to embrace that surprise, because you can't control both. It's impossible. Have you ever done like this? Yeah.、Ooh, wow. I mean, I wonder. I don't know. Let's check. Let's <laughs> let's try it out. But it is. It's very hard to do. You, do you find the experience of let, looking in that middle and just really letting go is a difficult one? Is one that you feel like you have to kind of get warmed up yeah, to? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta. Yeah. So let's let's see what we've got. Much more honest. <laughs> Much better. Not such a liar painting. Not such a liar. <laughs> It's funny because we start and, we're, and we say circles, and our image of a circle is perfect, right? And so we're looking at all the circles we make, and we're like, "It's not perfect." There's another circle that's not perfect. There's another circle that's not perfect. <laughs> When really none of the goal of this is to make anything perfect. It's just to make something that is a is an identifier of who you are. And when you start to look at marks as an identifier, not something that has to be anything. All of a sudden, this whole world opens up, and you realize the thing in the sidewalk, the thing on the table, the scratches on the side of my car are all marks that, if I stop thinking, have to be something, are all just amazing, incredible, and beautiful. So, you can start to like let it go. I love making people feel like they can make art. I love making people feel like they are part of this conversation that is art, and not. Driving the viewer to one side of the room so that it makes the artist、um, it clearly denotes whose artist and, and, and whose viewer. You need to 
feel like who you are is important and what you're thinking is important and that by doing it you'll feel better about yourself and that thing that you've now created is a way for you to communicate with those around you. I would just say I would love everyone to be that way because I think if we were more that way we would, the onus on all these other things that we use to find happiness would go down tremendously. So. Yes. Weird that I'm calling George more than my own mother? Well, he knows more about the golf cart than she does. George, how did you feel when you got to Connecticut? I felt great. So I'd like the pilgrims traveling across the United States on their, you know, on their covered wagons and their, and their stuff like that. It's uh, you're doing something that's, uh, that's not supposed to be done. Well, I'll try to give you all the feeling I can. We appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, hey, we're both into it, you know? Absolutely. This is a joint venture. Great. You gotta be crazy enough to do what I did. <laughs> <laughs> now drive careful because I might be out there. Sounds good, George. <laughs> I feel like George and I are finally starting to click. And you know he's right. We both might be a little crazy. The fear of just doing something that's never been done. I felt like, how can you call it that? My dear astronauts going to the moon, going someplace that they've never been and never done. You know, I mean, people roller skated across the country, they ride bicycles, they drive cars. Roller skate? Someone's roller skated across America? Yeah, people have done that. Who? I don't know, but people have done Someone it. Someone probably has. But it's been done. People's walked across the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, and you also go, because you are going a little crazy. <laughs> That's just the way it goes when you're driving across the United States all alone. In Greenville, South Carolina, we found that two things go really well together, rock and roll and painting. It's a psychological phenomenon called synesthesia, where one sensory inputs another. I always have to have music when I paint, and it influences the way and style and the method that I paint. And so with this, I said, okay, you know, I want to do um, the history of rock and roll music. How can I relate that in a, in a visceral sense on canvas and do it not only with two-dimensional paint, but also with three-dimensional light? This represents Queen, We Are the Champions, right? This is Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. This is the Sgt. Pepper piece, right? So it's a live audience. The audience comes to the show. That's art in itself, right? I mean, who's going to watch a guy push paint around for two hours? People get it, and they're seeing that there's more than just pushing paint around. There is some sort of higher consciousness that goes inside of art making. And, you know, uh, Joseph Campbell, one of my mentors, said that uh, the writers and the, and, the, and the painters are the modern-day shamans in the community, you know? So, uh, rock on. What is your art? What is my art? I never will forget, I was with Ringling School of Art, and uh, my professor came in behind me. I was painting hyper-photorealistic, you know. Every little halftone nuance and variation was there, depicted inside of, these, inside of these renderings or paintings. And she said, Standridge, why don't you try to paint the spirit of the bird rather than the feathers of the bird? And I thought, not only am I going to try to, that, that I'm going to do that, but that's going to be part of my mission statement for life. I would hope that my art is something that makes us think. And if it's not that, then it's just something to match your new pillows. I'll take that. We come to this world with the ability to be creative, but society stifles that creativity by fear or whatever. And so here's my message to people, is to sing, man, even if it's only good to you, sing. Dance, it doesn't matter who, you know, even if you can't dance like Mikhail Baryshnikov or, or Rudolf Nerez, get up and boogie, let yourself go, don't worry about it, and uh, you'll save a lot of money on, on books and a little bit on therapy too. Yeah, I Everybody's an artist. You should know that. 
What would you say your art is? Our art is happiness. <laughs> Seriously. Uh -huh. It's a golf cart. Going across America. Are you serious? I used to write a little bit of uh, poems here and there. How about you? You are? My art? Yes. Woo. Uh, there's so many colorful faces out there and uh, just talking to people. USA. Three letters leave us with a whole list of proud possibilities. Too real to run from and far too vivid to discard as dreams. A nation without partisan punditry because there are no teams and race. It's just a playful competition to see who can do it faster. So even though Many people that are much smarter than me had always said that the best things that you should write are the things that you're most scared of saying, that you believe to be true. And, uh, and telling your story is, is I, I feel like in art, one of the more valid things that you can do. And pride exists, buried inside my body. That's where you find it embedded, because America only means conservative male, white Republican. If we leave it or we let it, it's threaded into our skin. And no leader or government or president or policy has the right to define patriotism and take our pride away. The thing with art is that it's so immediate in relation to social justice and to political climate, one should look at the artists because they're usually about 15 to 20 years ahead. There's no checks and balances in art. You, I mean, it's just your own story. To come with, some, with any sort of like pro-America stance in a, in a poetry scene is a challenge. I think it's hard for us as a society to somehow disconnect from all of the bad things that happen here. Um, and it, and it makes us cut ourselves off from the good things that we could do. The promised land. And no leader or government or president or policy has the right to define patriotism and take our pride away. So when she inquired who I wanted to win, well, I replied, USA. So it's pretty late. It's uh, thinking about my dad, thinking about my mom, who uh, I haven't really spoken to in a long time. Uh, it's been more than a year. Uh, I don't have a great relationship with my mom right now, but I think it's understood on both of our parts what's happening. We get each other. My mother gets me, of course, and I get my mother which is a slightly more surprising. Who knows, maybe I'll run into her along the way. I believe in a new day to come that is What's your art, Mom? I knew that you were going to ask me that question. I wanted my um, question to be not what is my art, but who is encouraged to produce art that's not whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> you can answer that later okay well here, here, here first you have to answer what is your art <laughs> i believe my art is communication you, you you have very strong reactions to to art why do you think that you have those kind of reactions to art that's a great question because art brings out your soul. 
What do you think my art is, Mom? We Some... called you the Happy Wanderer, <laughs> which meant two things. The product was we never knew where you were. The process was that you wanted to talk to everybody. There was a third hidden agenda. You did used to ask for money. You used to ask people what? for quarters. For my I art? Have a quarter? No, you just say, could I have a quarter? God, and the thing of it punk. is, the thing of it is, they would give it to you, which only encouraged your wandering. We called you the wanderer. Mom, I wasn't wandering. I was begging. <laughs> Basically. We were on the cusp of that point where you could still speak to everybody. And that's what we wanted you to do. And you just did it. The art of meeting everyone in the world is the best art there is. Still I'm moving on. So this is a, a pretty big moment. Uh, I sent a, an email to Edward Albee who is a hero of mine, asking him if we could interview him when we're in New York City. He is a playwright, and we have a bunny. I forgot about the bunny. Dear Mr. Albee, it's difficult to describe the honor it would be to arrange a brief interview and meeting with you this summer when I'm in New York. I'd be happy to meet you at your home or elsewhere in the city at a rehearsal or performance or even over a pastrami on rye. I don't think Edward Ali is Jewish. He's a very, very intense man. He really, he sticks up for the playwright. Like he, he's a tough guy playwright, which is so nice that we still have people like that. I mean, he's, you know, the father of the American theater right now. And, and I think he, he is very aware that he's the father of the American theater. Please do let me know if you can spare even 15 minutes. All my very best, Jeremy Mink. We'll see if he replies. On to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Home to more than 2,800 murals. We found this guy painting illegally at a construction site. My face is covered because I do graffiti all over the city and I'm a criminal. What are you painting today? I don't know, it's like a ninja, but it's a peace ninja. Police are cracking down on graffiti writers, which is bullshit, because crime just flourishes while we're just out communicating. This is my way of saying, all right, you're gonna go after these graffiti artists as opposed to the criminals, try to catch me. So that's what I do. Historically, Philadelphia has had problems with illegal graffiti tagging. Their solution? Just make a place for artists to paint legally. We have more murals than any city in the world. Come on, Philly. It's an expression. It's, it's about need. It's about social change. It's about uh, input. It's about communication. I think it's important for us to have art in our lives. I think it's why we go to galleries and museums. It's why we put art on our walls. And I think to have art right in a neighborhood, in your community, is something that's extraordinarily powerful. Every neighborhood is really rough. There's a lot of crime, there's a lot of drugs. And murals are a sign that, that people care, but more importantly, that things can change. And that's what's so wonderful to me. You know what I'm doing here, Jay? What are you doing? I'm cleaning up your mistakes! Look at this drip! There's the line, there's the drip, man! What do I do? And tell me, man, what is your art? It's graffiti, so it's vandalism, and it's the raw form of communication. And my art is this program. I would say that I look at the whole mural arts as a creative endeavor. My art is about, like, express whatever I hear on the street, whatever I see on this particular neighborhood, printed on the wall, like a testimony of the people at this precise moment. So in 10 years, 20 years, people might know about this neighborhood. Bye. All right, well, that was uh, George Bombardier's daughter, Patty.
she wasn't surprised actually though that it, it got this far. She said, "Oh, the 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 golf cart my dad built, it's built to travel." <laughs> what state are we in, Randy? New York City. Oh, hey, welcome to New York. Welcome to New York. My art would be stage combat choreography. Like one of the members put it, geeks bettering themselves. A lot of it is just, you know, building your confidence, your self-confidence. Don't mess with Jedi ladies, they will beat you. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> this is the reason to do comedy, because someone will just run up and give you an umbrella, which is nice. He needs a cigarette. And a cigarette. Some cigarettes. See, this is how it works, guys. I don't yeah. really know this person. Yeah. My art is something that I would call Von Hotness. The name that I've given for the inner quality which allows people to be the best that they can be at all moments in their lives. My guerrilla performance art and my calendar and my apparel and my advice blog are all geared towards this quality of Von Hotness. I'll have in like the same group of people, one person will be like, mm, 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 you go girl. And then the person next to them will say like, who does she think she is? Is she crazy? You know, but they kind of like it. They're just jealous. You know, people first hook on to the like, oh, you're in a bathing suit in public. It's just so scandalous, you know. But after a while, people really get it. And they're they're like right on. Like, you, like if you want to wear a bathing suit in New York City, you can wear a bathing suit in New York City. No one ever really said no to me, so I just keep doing it. And I'm kind of waiting for that shoe to drop, but since it hasn't, I'm just gonna keep going. If I wanna be the boss of my company, I'm gonna be the boss. You know, if I wanna make it, I'm gonna make it happen. You're like, that's right. <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> Comedy in New York. Seinfeld said nothing funny was ever said on a beach. I'm paraphrasing. I think that's true. And New York is a very funny place to write and create anything. I don't want to go to the museum. I just want people to think I'm the kind of guy who would go to a museum. <laughs> you know what I mean? I go to the Met, I get that little pan, I wear it all week. I'm like, this? This? Yeah. I was at the museum. And I got it. Whatever it is you're supposed to get. I sketched, I was quiet, I got to know myself. Why do I do it? Yes. I have to do it. And I know that sounds, it sounds so hackney and, and tired, but like on stage, I'm allowed to be anything. Off stage, I'm a pussy in relationships, in life, but on stage, I, I'm allowed to be angry, I'm allowed to be sad, I'm allowed to be passionate, I'm allowed to be loud. You know what I mean? I'm allowed to be this side of me who I want to be more in my regular life. I'm not a manly guy, and uh, <laughs> yeah, but this jacket wants you to think I am. It's like, you got some dusty logs you want to throw in the back of a pickup? Like, look at this jacket! I'm ready to help! I'll cut you! Is that what men say? I don't even know! Just, Let's fuck ladies! I am not, I'm not a manly guy. This is me. I just, Let's have a lemonade! That's what I want to say. In theater, you do it you could say something, and if people don't understand it, they're like, oh, it's probably profound. But with stand-up, if you say something, everything's intended for the same purpose. It's supposed to make you laugh, you know what I mean? So I hope that makes it an inclusive art. What's your art? Um, I think the art of stand-up, I'll take it away from even my stand-up, is honesty. If you're being honest, you, you can hopefully re uh, achieve something artistic. And I really believe that. There have been moments where a crowd is connecting and laughing in a way that, it, that everybody is unified. And it's like, I thought I was the only person that this, this, or this. And that guy's up there and he's exposing something just as a, as a musician or a painter or, or a sculptor. And we all get together and, and laugh at it together. And I think that, that is the art of stand-up. So, would be my art. That's the last bite for your movie. <laughs> If we're making a movie, we could really use a theme song. Give me a sentence. Not too long. How about 
<laughs> about cart across America. And put it in a sentence? Cart across America is coming to you. Cart across Just America? Sitting near you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna re request that it that you change the lyric to "Cart Across America is coming to a city near me." Got it. Okay, so first first you figure out the the emotional energy of the song. A character could be very depressed to hear that "Cart Across America is coming to a city near him," in which case, you know, you might you might have something like, uh, you know. So the accompaniment sort of sets the mood, uh, and I'll just you know try out some things. I have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth. Uh, Cart across America is coming to a city near me. You know, uh, uh, okay, we're here. We're going to uh, going to Edward Albee's place. When speaking with Edward Albee, don't speak, or at least limit your words, and try not to repeat yourself. Be sure to share your time equally between looking in both of his eyes, because if you're like me, you have a terrible fear that you'll miss some part of him during the 48-minute interview at his home in Tribeca, New York. This fear has perpetuated all of my days since arranging the chat with my short time hero. At a rehearsal or performance or even over a pastrami on rye. How do we interact with him? What do I say to him? I'm, I'm terrified. I'm scared out of my mind to ask him a question. You nervous? No. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> there is some leniency in knowing his biography, but there is not in knowing his work. You should know three tall women, too. He says with a sort of sad disappointment that sounds like my dad asking me not to yell in the house. Oh, no. Don't be nervous. You know why? Why? He's only won three Pulitzers. Only three? He hasn't won, you know, 40. No. If you don't know the entire canon of the three-time Pulitzer Prize winner, don't fret. Why? This is Andy and... You still get to stand near him when he stubs the keys of his tiny harpsichord. <laughs> I gotta ask, did you wear all these, these pairs of underwear here? No. <laughs> no, that was done by Jonathan Thomas. He and I lived together for 35 years till we died. No, I, didn't, I don't wear underwear. It's, uh, I'm glad I know there's, that now. There's the revelation. <laughs> <laughs> fact about it. Any art that is merely decorative is a fucking waste of time. That's one of the troubles with the arts in the United States. There's very little subsidy for serious art. And the good stuff has got to compete with the junk. And the junk is always more popular. It's got to be useful. It's got to be instructive. It's got to change people. Or at least put people in the condition when they know they should change. What scares you about art, whether it's your own or other? That uh, people may turn their back on it, which is turning the back on evolution. We assume that um, evolution is taking place and that we are evolving, and one of the things we evolved into was the ability to make art. Here's the most important thing. We are the only animal that makes art. We humans, the only one. That's pretty fucking important. Where do you go to write? Hmm? How is don't, it? don't start talking about the creative act. <laughs> I don't think no, anyone really knows. Nobody wants to talk about that shit if they're any good. Really. We have a goal in mind, which is every interview that we conduct, we try and participate in an art with that person that we interview. How do you do that? That's a great question. I'm glad you're asking the questions now. Mm. Yeah, well, give me some answers. Maybe a... a an exchange of dialogue from a play. No, I'm not going to do that. No. No. Forget it. No, forget it. Okay. I don't know whether I want to act with you or not. This is just not what I expected. 
you know, you want your hero to be gracious and considerate and inspiring. I guess I just hope that the conversation would have been more that he would have liked me. But it doesn't really matter. I had the great honor of just being in his presence. And rather than thinking about him looking down his nose at me, I realized that it's those things under his bushy eyebrows on which I should be concentrating. He really did leave a lasting impression in a very different way than I expected. So can we valet this puppy? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Do you have a, a ticket? A no, ticket no, stuff? I give you free. No, no, I don't charge you because it's a cool car, you know? Well, thank you, man. Over here where they're putting the car is where they keep all the VIP cars here at the Westin. And that, that's cream. butter. Everything gets topped with whole butter. Uh, gives it a little bit of flavor, a little yeah. bit of richness, a little yeah. sheen to it. No margarine here. No margarine. <laughs> Hell no. My art is the ability to go out there and make memories for people. Hey, I guess I'm lucky to be a Bostonian, man. You know, I love that dirty water. Oh, Boston, you're my home. Look, look all around us. This is all art, man. Life is art. I think it's time to call in some favors here. We should probably stop in at my ex-girlfriend's house. Hey, Jenna, where are we? We're at Wolf Spring Farm in Ashley Falls, Massachusetts. You can talk at a normal volume. <laughs> are you sure you don't want me to talk like this? I'm sure. Okay. Oh, now this is Jenna, my ex-girlfriend's sister. Jenna, what are we doing? Why are we here? We're gonna make some felt. You take your wool, this wool has all been dyed, and you uh -huh. want to rip it into really small pieces so all the fibers are kind of loose, and just make a pile of it in front yeah. of you. <laughs> Don't stop ripping! And you're not allowed to talk while you you're doing like. this. The ridiculous tomato greenhouse. Eat it. This eat is an it. all organic farm. What's gonna happen if I eat it? Nothing. Oh my god. <laughs> that is amazing. And then you take, this is just dish soap in water. If you have long sleeves, you may want to roll them up. Is this an informational video? It sure is. Can we do my workout video later? Uh, yes. Ball it up. Yeah. Don't squeeze it too hard, though. Okay. You want to give it... Okay. Give it some air. Give it a little bit of loft. Loft. Excuse me, but you've fallen behind. These are pigs. Piggies. They really like to have their picture in here. You guys are eating this up. Ready? Um, this is the important part. It's kind of like, think about drowning a small dog. Okay? Wait, say that again. <laughs> Loosely grasp it. Ready? A quick, just really quickly dunk it. It doesn't even need to go Today. totally under. Okay? I like to make things for myself more than other people because I'm... My parents are very crafty people. I grew up knowing that I could make most things myself, you know? My dad made 90% of our toys growing up. So I grew up thinking that you can make everything. I think it's a great way to live. I mean, yeah. you can buy a hat or you can make a hat. Or you can buy a basket or you can make a basket. It's a craft. At one point I went out to the shop and I asked my dad if he could make me a My Little Pony. <laughs> he made us like ponies that were wooden. I didn't yeah. understand like, you know, plastic. Just tell me what is your art? That's a very, that's like what is the meaning of life? I hope you realize. I'm the kind of person I'll never be happy with my answer. So if I ask you right my now. My art is craft. Does that work? I think that that is it. I think that's my answer. Make a lot of parallels. You just broke my needle. How? I didn't know that that was possible. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is there anything else? I didn't know that was possible either. That is a really um, good And that, that was um, needle felting, and now we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think people are actually going to watch this? Absolutely they are. This reminds me of like a four and a half hour YouTube post. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jenna. You're welcome. A father lost would have been better.
The answer is we're really trying to throw ourselves fully into it, as to really bear ourselves, bear our psyche, bear our guts. What I'm trying to capture is not, is not the actual story, but what goes on energetically and feeling-wise within the person and translating that in movement. If I would be moving towards you now, I'd probably just walk uh -huh. through the space. If there was some subtext, you know, tension, I would have to imagine, like, the space might be a little bit thicker, and I would have to, you know, get myself through the space, sort of inch my way to you, and you would feel that space between us getting smaller and attention building. It's, it's a combination of imagination and technique. Jeremy, what month is it? I don't know, but I just saw a pumpkin growing on the side of the road. Andy, I gotta get home before it snows. I didn't bring a jacket. Jeremy, these, these are your people here. Did you tell them that? Hello, back across America! <laughs> Love it. Love it, guys. <laughs> Uh, capoeira is a, an Afro-Brazilian martial art. Uh, it's about four, five hundred years old. Brought from the west coast of Africa to the east coast of Brazil. If you have to fight out in the street, you know that no matter what that person does to you, you can push past it and still survive. And that's kind of like the bottom line. You know, survive and live on. Pass on your knowledge to the next generation so that they can survive and live on. You can take something this big, and on a potter's wheel, you can just turn it into this without adding or subtracting. I realized that it just wasn't the techniques or the hands that were shaping the clay. It was just whoever that person was. They were giving the shape to the clay. My art is just to, um, to work for myself, to feed my spirit. There's a spirit to love making, there's a spirit to cooking, there's a spirit to making ceramics. Spirit to living. Once you tap into it, it's pretty universal and pretty timeless. You know, when I listen to music, when I listen to really, really good songs, I, I inflect and I just think about all of the possibilities of life, you know, and it's the time to dream a little bit, to daydream, to like be optimistic and to let your imagination run away with you. And so when I think about myself making music, it's an avenue for me to make my dreams come true. What is your art? Hmm. What's our art? We make fiber into things that people live their life in. I've touched the lines, lines on my face. I like telling stories, clearly. There's a lot of things to consider, you know? There's like, how are things are gonna look? What, if you have to design elements of the story? How are you gonna set shots up? It's gonna go left to right, right? So whoever's probably gonna talk first is gonna be on the left side, and then right, you know? So it's like, I gotta set my shots up like that, you know? And that's just the beginning of it, you know? Now I have to draw it all. Pretty proud of this, not gonna lie to you. Hey guys, my name is Amy Francis and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. And I want to know, what do you guys do when it rains? It's not a very good day to be driving in a golf cart. Uh, we are about to get soaked. Holes in the sign welcoming you to Nebraska. So we only have about 
nine days left. Seven of those are driving through Nebraska. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I saw some corn over there. Not as much corn up, up, up ahead. Wanna, wanna film on the road a bit? That could be fun. Please, God. I just want to go home. for me. Wait for me. Hello, Colorado. Woo! <laughs> what are we doing at Denny's? George is here. Here he comes. George drove all the way out to Denver for our welcome home party. That is there awesome. he is. <laughs> George! George, how you been? <laughs> Did you have a good trip? I had a great trip. Uh, it was awesome. You. Dumb and dumber, that's what I call you. <laughs> George, what are you wearing? Uh, jail outfit. The scariest part A what? Was sailor outfit. How come? Because I'm the captain of the ship. Cart across America, rock on good. These guys did it. Woo! So, how'd we get here? This is TEDx. It's an independently organized TED Talk. TED is a conference of ideas worth spreading. It's been great writing this speech because we are finally able to look back and think about, okay, does this matter? So, walk out on stage. Applause, applause, applause. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, please sit down. No, no. I, you, I love you. No, you, you're good looking. You're good looking. No, you are. Better than I am. What am I most scared about? As part of our talk, Andy's gonna ask me, what's your art, Jeremy? I've been trying to figure that out this entire journey, and I'm still at a loss. I mean, I think mine would be people, travel, finding motivations of, of why people do things. I'm fascinated by it. All right, one last run through. Do you guys have what you need? They got all the cues. I mean, that's most important. Okay. All right, cool. Thanks, so make sure you guys are good. Thanks, dude. Thanks. This is my shot. My one chance to maybe even justify to myself this trip matters. Um, sorry, I'm thinking about how to start. Do you want me to start? We, uh, no, <laughs> I'm just thinking of how to start. You know, most people, when making a speech, will say something like, um, remember this, it's going to be on the test later. You should probably remember this, it's going to be on the test later. <laughs> well, we're going to jump right to the test. I want you to answer this very important question. What? What is your art? Is your art? What is your art? My name is Jeremy Meg. And I'm Andy Rainey. And it's our firm belief that everybody has an art. So then the transition from everyone has an art into golf cart. We explored this theory. To explore this theory, 
we traveled by golf cart. We met some really incredible artists along the way, and most were willing to share their art with us. But we got some really unexpected answers about what art means to people in America. Angus Galloway in Atlanta, Georgia, he said that there's a misconception about art, that it's an act of leisure, when in fact it's actually very difficult. The end result can sometimes look soothing and pleasant and peaceful, but the experience is something else. Rick Standridge, right here in Greenville, South Carolina. He told us this story about going into elementary schools and asking the kids in the classroom, Who in here is an artist, grades one through five? Every one of them raised their hand. I'm Matisse Renoir de Goss, Mr. Rick. Look around, the world is my oyster. But as he got to middle school, and especially in high school, fewer and fewer hands went up when he asked the same question. And we realized that as we get older, people tend to feel like they may not be creative, and they don't want to admit to being creative in their hearts. And Jeremy, you remember Erin Garman? Erin Garman in Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix. She was an art teacher with juvenile delinquents. And she said that most oftentimes her, her kids' artwork was very dark and depressing and violent. And she said, though, that it's something that she really encourages her students to do. I think art helps express some of their deviant fantasies and stuff so they don't have to act on them. Those students who participated in the arts for four years did about 60 points better on verbal and about 40 points better on their math sections of their SATs. And lastly, what does art do for us? Edward Albee said, We are the only animal that makes art. We humans, the only one. So to be human is to be creative. So why is it that we deny our humanity? And, and my art, I would say, I'd, I'd have to say is travel. And Jeremy, what, what's your art? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> I did. Um, I think my art is um, communication through the arts. It's like making a film. It's a great example. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Even though this is the last stop on our documentary, this is not last stop of this journey. This is an open-ended journey. And the conversation of what's your art must not stop here, nor can the discovery of art. We all must think about what it is we're passionate about. I mean, everything comes from the creativity that we all have inside of us. people honestly express themselves in a way that is challenging. My art other than acting? Well, I have a couple flame throwing and being myself. My art is life. I think part of art is like living through that process and creating something beautiful at the end. Art is everything. We are walking art and we create all the time. I don't think people would live if there was an art, just all the different forms of it. We should stop asking the question of what do you do for a living and not listening to the answer. We should ask questions that actually allow us to get to know each other. I think everybody has creative energy of one kind or another. It's a love that goes into the way that you do something and when you spend enough time to care about what it is that you're doing, everyone notices and everyone then wakes up to that creativity. So I want everybody to go out and find their art and practice their art and share your art with your neighbors. So we'd actually like you right now uh, to turn to your neighbor. And I think you know what the first question is. See if you can listen. I've got these outlaws chasing me, and these lawmen won't leave me be. Hey, my name's Alex from Polson, Montana, and my question for you guys is, how do you get up hills? 
to make the golf cart a little lighter and go a little faster, we've decided that one of us should run alongside of it, going up this steep hill here. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> well, I travel far and near to find what I hold dear, and I just now realize. You know what I think it is? It's gotta be the altitude. No, I'm just right? nervous with oh, this yeah. car. It's trying to get by you. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, what? There's no car there. <laughs> you got more in you then? <laughs> My legs are burning. Come on, Jeremy. Give me a sec. You're wasting all the time you just saved us. Just leave me here. Really selfish, you know that? Just go. Hey guys, this is Ben from back home in Englewood, Colorado. My question is, what do you guys eat on the road? Hi guys. I think I'm most nervous about the food. Although I, I, I doubt that, you know, even if we like break down somewhere in Arkansas that Andy will have to resort to cannibalism to stay alive. That's probably the first thing I'll resort to. <laughs> I can't wait to eat you. I can't wait. It's gonna be so delicious. Well, you gotta peel the tail and suck the head and eat the meat. I don't know who I've got to find One for me to find I got caught in Detroit City And my baby now she feels pity But there's not much you can do Hi, give me a bite. <laughs> I'm pretty excited here. A skilled surgeon could still save it. Cheers, Jeremy. Thank you. Here's to 4,000 miles. Cheers. Here. I'm glad what I found.